guys, Helen Hart Smith here from the Heart of the Witch's Path YouTube channel. Hello, hello, hello. I've been um really busy the last couple of months. So um, videos have been a little sporadic, and so I apologize for that. Um, got I got my new job, which is kind of like my old job, and so it's just taking a little time to get things kind of smoothed out. And we're still we're still not completely um, like kind of at an even keel yet. But I figured, you know what? Today I'm going to sit down. I'm going to record some videos. Um, I'm behind again imagine that on the uh 2016 youtube pagan challenge videos so i'm gonna try to film a bunch of those ahead um so who knows if i you know if bridget seeks to um give me some creativity you might have a new video every day this week who knows what'll happen but i i got some um ideas and so i'm feeling really inspired so maybe she's already working through me Thank you, goddess. Um, so let's uh, let's kind of jump into things. I thought what I would do first is kind of give an update about um, there's been um, not only has work been really busy for me lately, but my magical um, aspect of my life. There's been a lot on the table recently as well. And so I thought I'd give you an update and look, I, I even mo made a list so I didn't forget anything. Ho, 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 ho. So, um, so yeah, let's just jump into the list and I might stray and come back. That's the power of Aries. It's all I have to say. So, um, the first thing I have on my list here is I'm super excited because this year I um, was asked to take a deeper uh, role in the Temple of Witchcraft um, staff. Um, Christopher asked if I would serve as moderator for one of the online classes. And I was beyond thrilled to be asked. And so what what happens is Christopher starts uh, an online class at the same time that he starts an in-person class. And for those of you who don't know who I'm talking about, Christopher Penzak is uh, the author of books like The Inner Temple of Witchcraft, uh, let's see, Gay Witchcraft. Uh, he has a book on Reiki. There's like 20 some titles. And so he's He's got many subjects covered and covered well. And so he is the co-founder of a uh, organization called the Temple of Witchcraft, which has a mystery school. And so I um, have been a student there for quite a few years. I finished my year four class in the summer, like in July, I think it was over with. And so the new classes, year one through four, started up. And so the um, the in the online students have a Yahoo group that they're members of. And so it's to kind of promote community and getting to know people um, because a lot of people are solitaires. And so that's a really great place for them to be able to connect with students that are going through the same exercises that they are and things like that. And so as a list moderator, um, my job is to kind of make sure that everybody's playing nicely, you know, no bullying, um, things like that. No one's being offended and stuff like that. And this year, um, Christopher has turned over uh, the the job, basically, of posting um, little extra things that he normally took care of himself. Um, I'm not going to get too like deep into what they are or anything like that. Um, but um, if you're interested in the Temple of Witchcraft, I'll try to remember to link below um, where you would go to check things out. Like I said, the new classes for this year just started. So new classes in that won't be offered until these classes are over with. Um, but it's, I highly recommend, um, the classes because they've been amazing for me. And so you may have read the books. If you're interested in Christopher Penzak, 
check it out and I'll leave a link. Let's just leave it at that and move on to the next item. So the next item on the list is, well, it's a little bit more of the last item kind of. Um, I have officially been accepted as a student for year five for the Temple of Witchcraft. Uh, Christopher's studies do go through a five-year course, um, which is different from some other traditions that might only go three. Um, and I think it makes sense, his approach to things, it makes sense to do so. Um, the fifth year class will start in January. So I'm really excited about that. This will be the culmination of a lot of years of study under Christopher. So I'm really excited to finish that. Uh, and so I have a bit of reading to do. So this book right here, The Living Temple of Witchcraft, Volume 1, um, this is a whopper 300-page guy that I need to have read and exercises done by the beginning of the year. So I'm going to be a busy camper for the next few months. And then the Volume 2 is actually the text that I guess we're going to use for class. So that is exciting. And um, I've already started reading this guy. And um, there's some pretty interesting stuff already in the first few pages. So again, if you're interested in Christopher, I'll leave a link to uh, the Temple of Witchcraft webpage so you can check it out for yourself. He's really been diversifying too and offering some classes both in person and online that are outside of um, the core five-year mystery school classes. He does a Wheel of the Year class uh, that I've heard is pretty popular. I haven't had an opportunity to take that one yet. I wanted to finish, like I didn't want to take two classes at once because one class is more than enough to deal with with your regular life and a job and all that. Um, so those are things that I'll probably look at once year five is completed. So, yeah, I'm so excited because I've been, like, waiting and waiting. You know, when will I know if I got in? So, yay. It's very exciting. Um, next on the list is kind of more student-y type topics. I think Kathy and I may have mentioned this in one of the podcasts, but in case you don't listen to the podcasts, which are right here on the YouTube channel, um, we have taken on two uh, students and um, we had a student before but he ended up moving away um, before we could complete his year of training um, so we consider him like our first student even though we technically didn't finish but we still love him Ah, you're out there honey if you're watching we love you um, and so we've taken on two students and we've got a pretty interesting curriculum these um, two students are are pretty fired up and they're like in it to win it and so we're really excited and the um, other people in our coven are uh, have met the two students so it's going to be a great year journey as we take these students through um, our curriculum and our first year and we'll see what that brings so I'm so excited um, Another thing that's that I'm excited about. Wow, these are all exciting things, aren't they? Um, <laughs> um, Kathy and I, we just did a podcast where we talked about starting a pagan meetup in our community. We're doing a monthly pagan meetup in a public place. It's um, it's so it's an open forum. It's just a real informal evening. It's during the week. It's um, in a public, like I said, a public location. So just a way to meet people. You know, there's there's a lot of people out there that are solitaires. And there's a lot of people out there that might be questioning what paganism is and the different kinds of traditions that are that kind of fall under the pagan umbrella and it's been really great to meet people um we've had druids stop by we've had people involved or interested in um norse heathenry asatru um that kind of thing we've had um which is, I, th 
I think I'm going to say, I can safely say witches who kind of had a family and kind of got out of things, but want to come back because the kids are a little bit older. Um, you know, different people from all walks of life, new witches, old witches. Uh, so it's really, I think that it has been really beneficial for us. And we started, I think it was in July. So July, August, September, October. This We're about to have our October meeting uh, in a couple of days because I'm actually filming on Monday. So, um, so it'll be our fourth, maybe fifth month, something along those lines. I don't remember exactly when we started. Uh, but it's great. We see new faces every week. And, you know, some people might not show up every week, but, you know, back the next or month. Sorry. Um, so I think it's been really beneficial and we'll just kind of see where it goes from there. So pretty, pretty cool. Um, the coven also just had our yearly reallured away. And for us, it's a weekend where it's just us coven members um, getting together for a weekend. Normally we go to Kathy's sister's cabin, but that wasn't possible this year. So we invaded another, um, another one's, another person's house and just kind of sacked out in places. And what we do is we cook together. We, um, people will take turns teaching classes or doing activities or things along those lines. And so it's just a really great way for us to bond as a coven. And it just so happens that right now our coven members are all female. So it's kind of a great venue for us. Uh, but I, I think where, you know, in the future we might have some men. And so that might change the dynamic of things. And that's okay because that's all a part of growing um, as a coven and as witches. So I don't look at that possibility uh, with, uh, you know, sadness or anything like that. It's just change and change is sometimes good. So, but yeah, real Lord away. Great time. Always fun. So coming up, we, um, I think I've talked, uh, blog posts and in videos, the coven, we do two, two times a year, we do what we call a crafty craft day. And so we study together two times a month. And so we'll read together. So we've kind of taken two of those days out of the year. We do one in the summer around midsummer. We do the other one at the beginning of December. So if you want to use these things as Yule gifts, you can do so. But we come up with crafts that we can make and then we split the things up and, and take them home. So we'll do things like make soaps or we did these really pretty um, bulbs one year where we put herbs in these clear uh, tree bulbs. Uh, we've done that. Uh, what else have we done? We made a, we make a lot of soap. <laughs> we do that a lot. Um, so diff you know, different things like that. And so I'm in charge of this one that's coming up in December. And so I'm looking at different projects that we can do. I'm thinking about maybe doing some sewing projects, maybe do some altar cloths. And uh, that's because that's pretty easy. Um, you know, we can serge the edges and then turn them and hem them. So, the, you know, I'm looking at some things like that. So if you have any suggestions for some crafts, they can be witchy in, you know, in theme or not. But if you have any suggestions, I'd love to hear them. So give a comment down below. That would be really helpful to me in my crazy time of everything going on. Um, so one other thing um, that I kind of want to talk about, and then I'll kind of let you go for this video. Oh, no, I got one more thing before that. Okay, so... <laughs> Wow, a little scattered today, folks. Sorry. Um, I wanted to share um, these things that I picked up. My One of my local dollar stores is closing, unfortunately, which makes me sad. But I went in and I found this and I thought they were so cool. Check this out. Okay, so what you have here, this is glass. 
And this is designed to go inside a taper candle holder and you can put votives in here. So if you have a taper holder, but no tapers and want to put some candles in it, look at this. And they were only 75 cents a piece. And I have on the shelf here, you can see I've got a pair of small brass candle holders and then I've got taller brass candle holders that I bought from a girlfriend's uh, yard sale this year. And so I thought, well, these would be great. They were 75 cents a piece. And I think I even got a percentage off because the store is closing. But I was so excited because now these candle holders, which I did buy tapers to put in them, but you know, they can be more versatile now. And that super, I can totally store those on that shelf next to them if I want to, because I can put them towards the back and stuff. Take a look for these. I was so excited to find them. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to talk about is, um, so we're into October, the last week of October here, and I'm looking for some tips, people. I have been, I've talked in other videos about growing herbs and such in the backyard. Uh, the roomie and I have gotten, you know, we've been trying to greenify our thumbs the last few years. Um, and things are going pretty well. Um, but the one thing that I keep having a sticky situation with is winterizing herbs so that they'll come back the next year. Now, there's some things that have come back, but some things that haven't. And there are some things that I know won't come back. Like I know rosemary won't come back. They don't winter over well at all. And uh, my bay plant, I... I brought him in and he actually just lives inside now. I was going to put him out this year and then never did. And he kind of said that he liked being where he was at next to the sink. He's got a nice window there. So he just stayed in and he's fine. Um, but I, um, what do I have out there? Like I have chocolate mint that I would love to have come back next year. And I've watched some videos, but I'm looking for some tips on how to winterize my herbs. Some are in pots, some are in the ground. So if y'all have something that you can share with me to help me out with this, I'd greatly appreciate it because I end up buying new plants just about every year. My peppermint has come back and this year was actually like the second or third year. Um, so that one comes back, but that one's pretty hardy. Um, but lemongrass, can't get that to come back to save my life. Um, and basil, like will basil come back? Because this was actually the first year that I ever uh, planted it. My lemon balm won't come back either. And that just frustrates me to no end. It's a good thing that the one plant that I had seeded itself apparently all over the backyard so I can always find a little patch <laughs> to take up and put in a pot. But um, the lemon balm, I'm, I'm not getting it in a pot. And maybe that's the point. Maybe a pot doesn't winterize over. I don't know. Give me some resources, please, and help me out to greenify this thumb some more. Okay. With that, I'm going to wrap up this video. I have no idea what that accent was, what it was from, whatevs. So, um, thanks for hanging in there with me. If you're here till the end, love you very much. Thanks for walking the path a little while with me. And until next time, blessed be.